2020, Mentor Channel. Hi, and welcome to this short briefing on dual bleed loss procedure. As you know, quick reaction from the crew is essential following a dual bleed failure as the cabin pressurization cannot be maintained. The crew must initiate the descent without delay. In that prospect, Airbus has developed the dual bleed loss procedure in two steps. First, a quick and single attempt to recover the faulty bleeds when this is permitted. And second, if unsuccessful, an initiation of the descent before the cap press excess cabalt triggers. On this short video, we are going to show you how to handle efficiently a dual bleed loss situation on an A330 and on A320 equipped with the monitoring of the dual bleed loss situation at ECAM. It's from the flight warning standard T5 on A330 and from the flight warning standard H2F8 on A320. For this example, we are going to show a dual bleed loss situation that is due to an overpressure in cruise for which the reset is permitted. So in the unlikely event of a dual bleed loss situation, the ECAM alert Air Engine 1 plus 2 bleed fault will trigger on the ECAM warning display. The ECAM warning display will also give the ECAM procedure to be applied by the crew. As you can see, due to its limited size, the ECAM warning display can only display the first step of the procedure, the reset attempt. But not the second step of the procedure, the initiation of the descent to flight level 100. To perform the engine bleed reset, the procedure first requests to confirm that the cross bleed is closed. To do that, the flight crew has to set the cross bleed rotary selector to auto, then the procedure requests to reset the faulty engine bleed by setting the engine bleed push button switch of the non. If the reset is not successful, the ECAM will request the crew to initiate the descent to flight level 100 or MEA Mora. It is important to note that the flight crew must perform this first attempt in order to properly sequence the ECAM and to display the next step of the procedure with the initiation of the descent. This applies if one faulty engine bleed has already been reset earlier in the flight following a single bleed failure, but this also applies if one engine bleed is placarded inoperative because of a dispatch under MEL. The reset of the faulty engine bleed must be performed to properly sequence the procedure at ECAM. This is reminded by a note in the operational procedure associated with the MEL item. Then, the following steps of the procedure will request to start the APU, to switch off one pack, and to use the APU bleed below flight level 220, or to continue to flight level 100 for an unpressurized flight if the APU bleed is not available. The procedure will also propose a reset at lower altitude, either at flight level 220 if the APU bleed is available, or at flight level 100 if not. A reset at lower altitude has more chances to be successful. To sum up, it is important to apply the ECAM actions in order not to delay the initiation of the descent. When one engine bleed is under MEL, this is the only case where the crew must disregard the placard and use the associated cockpit control. The MEL dispatch cases are always compatible with an engine bleed reset and have no adverse effects. I hope you enjoyed this briefing and I see you around for the next one. A320 Mentor Channel. Thanks for watching.